Hi, St. Luke's family. This is Pastor Jim. We're starting a series today called Small But Mighty. And today we're going to dive into the book of Philemon, which is one of the shortest books of the Bible. It's written by Paul, but still has a good challenge for us today. It's only one chapter long. But the challenge of it is in how we treat, how we relate to other people, particularly to other Christians. Um, we're not going to read the book today, but after this study, I challenge you to go in and read it for yourself. So let's dive in. The book of Philemon has three main characters in it. The first is Paul. Paul is a follower of Jesus, and he's the one writing the book, and he is also, at this point, he is a prisoner. He's writing the book to Philemon. Philemon is the namesake of the book, and he's also a wealthy um, man uh, who owns slaves and a lot of land. And so um, he is the person that Paul is writing to. The third person in the book is Onesimus. Onesimus, and his name means useful, but Onesimus is a slave. We find out that he has been helping Paul but he's actually a slave owned by Philemon, but Onesimus has run away. And so Paul is writing this book to Philemon, and he's uh, writing it about Onesimus. And Paul says, Onesimus has been helping me, and during the time that Onesimus has been helping me in prison, um, Onesimus has become a Christian. And so um, we've been talking about this, and he knows that he's a runaway slave as well. And we feel like we, he needs to come back to you, Philemon. Now, this was a scary thought for Onesimus, because in uh, Jesus, in Paul's day, um, slave owners who had a runaway slave could deal really harshly with them, and even it was legal for them to kill a runaway slave. Now, Philemon, though, was also a Christian, and Paul is writing to him and saying, Philemon, I want you to take Onesimus back. I'm sending him back to you, and I want you to take him back, but not as a slave, but in a different way. Now, to expect Paul to say here, I want you to free Onesimus, but he doesn't. Instead, he says, Onesimus, I want you to take, uh, or Philemon, I want you to take Onesimus, your slave, as your brother, and treat him as such. What Paul is doing here is a giant leap for someone like Philemon, who has seen people like Onesimus as something less than him, that he can own uh, another person. Paul is saying, I want you no longer to treat him uh, as that, but as your brother. Take him back into your household, but not as a slave, but as your brother um, in Christ. Now, Paul's not asking Philemon to free Onesimus, but to bring him into his family. That's a giant step for someone like Philemon, who probably uh, sees Onesimus as less, but may even see Paul as less if you are only to hear about what's happening, because Paul is in prison now, and Paul makes sure to bring that out. He both says, I am in prison now, and he also tells Philemon, but remember that I am your father in some ways, because I was the one who told you about Christ, and through Christ you have been saved, so I am your spiritual father. So even though I'm in prison and you could see me as less than you, I'm also your father and in the same bond with Christ. And so he's asking Philemon, see Onesimus in the same way. Even though he is your slave, treat him, bring him into your family because he is in your family, because he is in Christ just as you are. Paul is knocking down the walls of that society. And in other places, he writes, there is no longer slave nor free, uh, Greek nor Jew, uh, woman or female, woman or man, but all are one in Christ. This is a message that our society, our world, and I think 
Um, we ourselves need to hear and wrestle with, again, there are so many different strata, so many different ways that people divide each other into groups, whether it's uh, by, uh, by the economy, whether it's by race, whether it's by uh, sports you like, or, or um, any of those types of jobs that we have, any of those types of things. And yet, uh, Paul says and reminds us that we are all one in Christ, and that is our, the overarching theme of who we are. I challenge you to read, to go back and read the book of Philemon and find in it the word of God, the word of life, and the good news in Christ. Amen.